the same speech confusions have been reported for bilingual children, Cardozo. And here we have the citations for the APA style. And you separate them with the semicolon, comma, after name but before the date. Expertise has been investigated in chess playing. And here you can see for APA style, you've got to have the comma, missing the comma here, and then the colon in between the different citations. The essay that the first group read were student generated, the essays. Those that the second group read were computer generated. So this is a little bit confusing. The essays, and it feels like you want to put a comma here, but no, because if you try to cut something here, the sentence meaning changes. The essays that the first group read. So this piece here that the first group read, we cannot take that out because it's specifically this group. If you took this out, then you would say the essays were student generated. That's true, but it's only the first group that were student generated. So it's a very specific. It cannot have two commas. The different methodologies have resulted in the same outcome. Constraining the alternatives results in faster solutions but poor transfer. So here we have the example of a dash. And a dash will explain this last little bit or change the tone in the sentence, change something. But in this case, what we're doing is we're adding information to make it more clear. And in fact, we have two independent sentences. And if you have two independent sentences and you're just trying to put them together, remember you can use the colon with the capital. Again, I would suggest you just keep them separate sentences is the easiest way to take care of that. But you can put two sentences together. It's a way to put two ideas close just to show these two ideas fit together. Don't do it too much though. For the three types of training, the proportions of new old solutions were 1 to 3, 1 to 7, and 1 to 20 respectively. So here we have the comma, the comma, comma, and. So it's a very easy uh, list. <clears throat> the order of preference for partners was as follows. Adult female, child female, child male, and adult male. And what we have here is this colon with a capital A. We just looked at this, what does this mean? This means I have a sentence here, and I have a sentence here, and I'm going to put them together very closely, but that's not the case. We just have a sentence and then a list. And this list is explaining the details. So here we use a colon with no capital here. So remember, no space before the colon, one space after, and then not capital. The different immigrant groups, European, Jews, Hispanic, Catholics, and Asian Buddhists have displayed different forms of assimilation. And so here we have the example of the dash. So the dash will set out this little piece of information here, European, Jews, Hispanic, Catholics, and Asian Buddhists. So this immigrant groups, I want to explain what does this mean? How do I explain it? I use a dash. If it goes to the end of the sentence, then you just put a period at the end of the sentence. But if you want to write more, then you add another dash, and that means that it's over, finished, and then you go back to your sentence. So we can read this by skipping over the dash. The different immigrant groups have displayed different forms of assimilation. Perfect. That sentence makes sense. And so this piece here is explaining exactly what does immigrant groups mean. If you only use the commas, it becomes very confusing. What is this doing? Is this listing something or is this explaining something? Very hard to understand. So a dash can be very handy. The participants rated their judgments on a five point scale ranging from just guessing to absolutely certain. And here we have the 
quotation marks, and remember we said avoid air quotations, avoid air quotation marks. Just write out what you mean and what they said or what they reported. Respondents in the gay condition, you see, gay, what does that mean? Well, we don't know what that means. So I'm telling you, I don't even know what that means. That's really silly. Clearly, we're just going to use the word gay clearly for whatever our situation is. We don't need to use the quotation marks. Now, if you feel you need to explain what is the gay condition, then you should explain it. But that's in another paragraph and another sentence. You don't need to use quotation marks. Really weird. The term multivariate, again, same idea, is reserved for investigations that use multiple dependent variables. So here we have a statistical term, and what do we do? We use the air quotes. Bad idea. Just write it out very clearly, multivariate analysis. You don't need to say multivariate like it's some kind of special word, even though it is a technical word, but you don't need to do that. And here's another example. An attempt was made to breed vagabond rats. Okay. Now, in this case, it's okay to use the quotation marks. Why? Because the rats are the subject of our test. We're giving some of the rats a special name. The name is vagabond. Vagabond has a special meaning. It's about uh, uh, people who are poor and go begging for money. So these rats are, must be begging for food somehow. So these rats are kind of like a variable, kind of like an X. And we're going to give the variable a name. What's the name we give it? Vagabond. So what we do is, the first time we use this, we can use the quotation marks. But then, after that, look, no quotation marks. So in this case, it's okay because it's very clearly saying this is a word that specially means something to my research, and in this case, it's these rats. It doesn't really mean poor people begging for money. It means rats who are begging for food inside my experiment. And I only do it once. The second time, I do not use the quotation marks. The article by Brown and Kuluk, Flashbulb Memories, contains reports of powerful naturalistic memories. So here, Flashbulb Memories, this is an article inside of a journal. And so we need to have the quotation marks. And you can pay attention there to the quotation marks. Here is a comma, one space after the comma, and this comma goes inside the quotation marks, you see, and then one space after the quotation marks, please remember. Garcia and Kuling, 1966, demonstrated prepared learning. We do not use the commas here because we use the parentheses in the APA style.